Hello guys and welcome to Laputra's YouTube channel. Today we will discuss about the pigeon hole theory in law of torts. Remember law of torts. I am Jagannath Kulkarni and I welcome you all to today's discussion. First of all, when we are talking about the law of torts, let us understand what is meant by tort. So by tort, it is any individual or group of individuals socially unacceptable behavior or that behavior which is deviating from established code of conduct which causes harm in the form of injury to reputation, reduced earnings, mental agony, etc. to other individual or group of individuals who can file for damages that is compensation in the form of monetary compensation or maybe injunction as applicable case by case and the law penalizes those wrongdoers who have caused the harm. Now let us talk about the damages which has the legal term damnum and damage that is injury legal term. Now there are two popular maxims one is injuria sine damnum and another is damnum sine injuria. What is the difference between those? The first one that is injuria sine damnum says plaintiff's enjoyment of legal rights has been interfered with without any competent authority to do so which is causing discomfort, injury, monetary loss etc. And even if no harm is caused to plaintiff mere violation of legal right is sufficient cause of action against the wrongdoer. So the damage is not important. Infringement of legal right is important in the first case. Second case that is damnum sine injuria says injury caused to plaintiff, actually injury caused to plaintiff without injury infringing on legal right. Legal right is not violated but the injury is caused. Let us take example. The defendant sets up the restaurant in front of plaintiff's restaurant due to which plaintiff suffers monetary damage because of decrease in plaintiff's customers. Now in this case the defendant's act of opening the new restaurant is morally wrong, may be morally wrong, but it is not violating any legal right of plaintiff and therefore the plaintiff is not entitled to get any remedy. This is called as damnum sine injuria. In spite of injury, damages will not be paid. Now, why we are using law of tort or law of torts? One would say that it is being used only interchangeably, but it is not so. Let us see what is it. Law of tort and law of torts. Sir Frederick Pollock, he was saying all wrongs are actionable as tort unless there is any legal justification. So he said there is only one tort. Whichever is wrong, civil wrong, is actionable unless there is any legal justification. But John Salmon said, he said there is no general principle of liability as such, but only a definite number of torts specified such as trespass, negligence, nuisance, defamation, etc. And plaintiff will have no remedy unless that plaintiff brings his case under one of the nominated torts. So specification of that activity is important according to John Salmon. He said law of torts is, is a neat set of pigeonholes containing a specific labeled torts. That's why he said just like corollary to criminal law which consists of a body of rules establishing specific offenses, law of torts consists of a body of rules establishing specific injuries. So civil wrongs they are injuries criminal wrongs, they are offenses. There are two major theories for basic principles of ascertaining liability of wrongdoer. The first is pigeonhole theory which is devised by Simon and another is prima facie tort theory. Pigeonhole theory says several unidentified offenses and wrongful conduct though which is unidentified would not come under purview of liability in tort law. But prima facie tort theory says 
the wrongs which are committed by party may not be injuring interest of other party that would come under purview of tort law without requirement of legal justification this is very important legal right is infringed it is a wrong but john salmon's uh, pigeon hole theory it is based on two questions first he asked should the law of torts be restricted to the torts that strictly fall within its purview means the law of torts when whether we can it is be restricted second is should every act which is deemed wrongful and committed without any justification be classified as tort this is very important every act according to salmon cannot be tort whatever is specified as tort that only should be considered as tort as per the john salmon's theory also he said that tort is a civil wrong for which remedy is common law action for unliquidated damages which is not exclusively breach of contract or breach of trust or other merely equitable obligation this is very important that john salmon has said he also said there is no single principle can be applied to ascertain liability of wrongdoer there is no simple principle no single formula to which can be applied for liability fixation and only well defined wrongs whatever has been defined in the tort should be considered as tort and they are confined within a small box so that is the assault this is the slander this is the battery this is the malicious prosecution or any recognized wrong which has been put in the small box just like the pigeon hole he also said remedy would be available for only those wrongs which would fall under established torts and burden of proof would be on plaintiff to establish that wrong would come under ambit of a specific and identified tort so pigeon hole that is defining the tort specified action only that would fall under for the obligation and if wrong would not be part of any of these pigeon holes then no claim would arise this is very important so john salmon is was very particular in defining the those actions which can only be claimed for damages so damage only though that damage which is falling under these pigeon holes would be considered for damages this is the salmon's pigeon hole theory remember if man will multiply the injuries action must be multiplied too for each man who is injured need to have recompense so this is the basic principle for the law of torts and this has been said by chief justice holt in ashby versus white this is very important and see these are the pigeon holes and only one pigeon can sit in one pigeon hole if there is no pigeon hole either you can put two pigeons in one hole as specified in this figure or the pigeon has to go out in this way suppose this pigeon doesn't get any hole suppose any action doesn't fall in the ambit of the tort specified tort then it will sink down so thank you thank you all thank you very much and today we discuss about the pigeon hole theory in law of torts by john salmon thank you